So since we're adding here, we're going to preserve precision. So we're going to add the numbers. 5.743 and 8.59. For 14.333. Okay. Perfect. Inches. Okay, so this number is precise to what's the degree of precision? To the thousand, right? This one's precise to the hundredths. So this is the least precise one. The, the hundredth is less precise. So our answer gets rounded to hundredths. Perfect. 14.33 inches. Go ahead. When we are multiplying or dividing, When you're multiplying or dividing, we will preserve accuracy. Do you remember from Friday what accuracy is? How we measure accuracy? Accuracy is the number of significant digits. So if we're looking at this number here, it has three significant digits. That has an accuracy of three significant digits. Actually, it looks like all of these have an accuracy of three significant digits. So when I multiply or divide, I'm preserving that accuracy or the number of significant digits. So if I were to multiply, 2.9 inches times 30 inches. I'm going to multiply the numbers. 2.9 times 30 is 87 inches squared. Because we're going to do inches times inches. But if I look at these, how many significant digits does this first number have? 2. 30 has how many significant digits? Careful. That zero is not significant unless it's indicated. So only one significant digit. So that means my answer has to be rounded to the least accuracy or least number of significant digits. That's only one. So I'm going to round off there. So this is going to become 90 inches squared. It's very important. Remember, I had mentioned that on Friday. That's where it gets confusing. Significant doesn't mean important. That zero is very important for the number. Because if I take that zero out, it changes the meaning of the three. But because it's important for the number, we cannot assume that it's there for the measurement. We, we assume that it's only there because it's needed for the number. And unless we have proof of otherwise, we assume that it's not part of the measurement. So if we have, you know, 30 like this with that three, that zero indicated, now we can assume that the zero is part of, or we, we know that the zero is part of the measurement. It's given to us. Or if we have 30.0, this zero is not needed. You might even say it's not important. The only reason for it to be there is because it's part of the measurement. So since that 0 is significant and the 3 is significant, now this one is 2. But zeros at the end of the number, unless they're after the decimal point, are not significant unless they are indicated. That's one of the confusing parts about this. Is it's very important, but still not significant. So let's look at... Twenty five inches times thirty eight inches. If I do twenty five times thirty eight, what do I get? Nine hundred fifty inches square. This has how many significant digits? There's two digits there, right? Two and the five are both significant. 
Remember, anything that's not a zero is significant. 38 has how many significant digits? Two significant digits. Good. So they're both the same, which means I'm going to have two significant digits in my answer. And we always start at the beginning, one, two, and that's where we're going to round to. So that one, we didn't really need to round. It's just 950. Let's say I have 4.75 inches times, I was not do 60, let's do 61 inches. So 4.75 times 61 is 289.75. Of course, inches squared is inches times inches. How many significant digits in the first number? Three, very good. How many significant digits in the second number? Two, good. So the smaller of those is the two, which means my answer is rounded to two significant digits. So I start at the beginning, one, two, I've got a round there. Now I still have to put that zero in there because it's still 290, not 29. But I'm rounding off after the second digit. So 290 inches squared would be my result. Let's try one a little bit tricky. Yeah, what the heck. We'll do it like that. Actually, I'm going to change this a little bit. So 70.0 inches times 32.1 inch is going to be what? 2,247. Thank you. Inches squared. Now the first one is going to get rounded to what? Or how many significant digits does it have, I should say? That seven is definitely significant. This zero here would not be because it's at the end of the number and before the decimal point. So how about this zero? That one is. It's after the decimal point and it's after other significant digits. So since that one's significant, we have to go back and call this one significant as well because it's between other significant digits. So that actually has three significant digits. This one has... Three significant digits as well. So my answer is going to get rounded to three significant digits. So 2,250 inches squared is what we would report that as. Let's take 50.0 inches times 40.0 inches. 50 times 40. Careful. Times not plus. Yeah, you're thinking had. That's okay. So you get 2,000 inches squared. But again, this has how many significant digits? Three. This one has three as well. So my answer has to be rounded to three significant digits. One, two, three. Well, that's not going to change the number, but there is something I have to do on it. Can anybody tell me what that is? Well, nope, it stays inches squared because I'm doing inches times inches. But what's that? 
No, because that would give it five significant digits. But you've got the right idea. I do have to indicate a certain number of significant digits here. It is significant to hear this zero is significant. So I have to indicate it like this. So that whoever is reading that knows that this is significant to the nearest 10, not just to the nearest 1,000. So that line indicates this last zero is not significant, but these other two are. Which I know that can be kind of tricky. So if I have 47.3 inches divided by 2.8 inches, 47.3 divided by 2.8, perfect, 16.892857142857, somewhere in there. We're just going to go 2.8. Six for now. The inches actually divide out, so there's no units on here, but we do still have to round it to significant digits. This has how many significant digits? Three. Good. This one? Two significant digits. So that means I have to round my answer to two significant digits. So one, two, I'm going to round it right there. 8 is going to round that up to a 17. So with this one, what do we do? Oh, it is add. So we're going to combine the numbers. 17.4 plus 8.734 is 26.134. Is it going to be inches squared? No. No, because we're adding. We keep the same name. So it's just inches. When we add, do we have to count the number of significant digits? Say no. 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 What, when we add or subtract, what are we looking for? We're looking for the place value. So we're looking for degree of precision. The degree of precision on this number is the tenth. Yep, the degree of precision on... On this one, 8.734 would be 1,000s. So the least precise one is the 10th. I'm going to round it 26.1 inches. So for this problem here, 1,910 inches minus 3.74 inches. Do that one in your notes quick. We'll go over it. So we go to subtract. 1910 minus 3.74 is 1906.26, correct? What's my units? Still just inches, right? When I add or subtract, we keep the same name. Where do I have to round it to, though? Careful. This one is precise to the nearest hundredth. But what's this one precise to? To ten. So I have to round this to the nearest tens right here. 
Now, if I round, that, that 6 is going to round that up to a, a 1. So 1,910 inches. We'll notice here, this is, this is kind of a weird problem because the number we started with, even though we subtracted 3.74 inches, we end up with the same number. Because since this one is only precise to the nearest 10, it has an error of plus or minus 5 inches. So what we are subtracting here is smaller than our possible error. Now, it's not very often that you're going to have a measurement that's only measured to the nearest 10 inches, and you're going to combine it with something measured to the nearest 100. But I wanted to show you that example just because it is kind of weird. Okay, so we can deal with the, the significant digits like that when we do our operations. And when we do our quiz on significant digits, um, I am going to walk you through it a little bit step by step so you can put everything together. But now that we, we uh, talked about the significant digits a little bit, I want to focus in on that portion from before, the error. Yeah, we talked about degree of precision, and then that gave us a possible error. I want to focus in on errors and types of errors. What we've been talking about so far is, usually, is what we would refer to as an absolute error or a possible absolute error. An absolute error is the difference between the actual value and the measured value. Now I'm going to add one symbol here. Those little lines, those mean absolute value. That tells me it doesn't matter which one's bigger or smaller. The absolute error is just the difference between them, no matter which one's bigger or not. So there's no positive or negative, just the difference between them distance between them. Now the issue here is if I knew the actual value there's no reason for me to be taking a measurement. Or so this really doesn't apply when I'm actually measuring an object. When I am measuring an object we often replace the absolute error with the possible error in the measurement. Just the half of the degree of precision. So what this generally applies to, absolute error would generally apply to if we're reading a blueprint and we are given a desired measurement. And we go to mark it out. So if you're looking at a blueprint and the blueprint says that you're cutting this leg for a table, the blueprint says the actual value should be 29 and 1 half inches. And you cut it and it is actually 29 and 5 eighths inches. The difference between those is our absolute error. Now as we look at these, we see this one's actually bigger than this one. So because of those absolute value symbols, again, we don't care which one's bigger or smaller. We don't care positive or negative. All we care is the distance between them. So we can subtract that as the 29 and 5 eighths minus the 29 and a half. And I'll let you guys verify if you do that on your calculator, the difference is an eighth of an inch. So the absolute error in that measurement is an eighth of an inch. Because we wanted it to be 29 and a half, and we ended up at 29 and 5 eighths. We're a little bit off. So the next step is to talk about something called a relative error. A relative error is the absolute error divided by the actual value, the actual amount. Now again, if we know, if we're taking a measurement, we don't know the actual amount. All we know is our measured amount. So if we were taking a measurement, this would be our, our uh, possible error on top 
And since we don't know the actual value, we would have to put our measured value down there. And since those two should be relatively close, um, it should work out either way. Um, it should be close to the same either way. So on our absolute error over the actual, that is supplying more to something like this again, where we're given a desired measurement, and we're measuring it out and cutting that piece. So on that example, the absolute error was one eighth of an inch. And that's over the actual or desired amount of 29 and one half inches. So we got one eighth divided by 29.5 is 0 0.00424. So that is a relative error. That's a proportion of the, the error that we are off. Now, depending on the textbook, some textbooks define relative error and percent error to be something different. They are really just two different ways of expressing the same amount. A percent error is found by taking the relative error, which is a decimal, and converting it into a percent. To convert a decimal into percent, you multiply by 100, or just move the decimal point over two spots. So that is a 0.424 percent error. So we're going to look at a couple of examples here. Um, let's say that we know Um, we, we desire, the, the plan calls for a three and three quarter inch piece. We cut it and it ends up at three and eleven sixteenths inches. So the absolute error The difference between 3 and 3 fourths minus 3 and 11 sixteenths. Again, I put the absolute value symbol because it doesn't matter which one's bigger or smaller. Ends up being a difference of how much? Sixteenth of an inch, right? So that is our absolute error there, sixteenth of an inch. Our relative error is found by taking that sixteenth of an inch divided by what we actually desired, the three and three quarters. So one sixteenth divided by 3.75, I'm going to put it in as, 0 0.01666. Seven. So that's a relative error. So then if I wanted to change that into a percent, error, we move the decimal point two spots or we multiply by 100, either way you want to think about it, that becomes a 1.67%. Now something for you to think about here. This one came out to a 1.6% error. The last one was only a 0.4% error. But this one was off by a sixteenth of an inch. And this one was off by a full eighth of an inch. How is it possible that an eighth of an inch is a smaller error than a sixteenth of an inch? Well, it's because to find the relative error we divide that absolute error by the desired amount. And since this one is a pretty small item that we were measuring or we were trying to create, that smaller error, that 1 16th of an inch, is actually a larger percent of the measurement than this big error of an eighth of an inch is up here. Because this was 29 inches long, 29 and a half inches long to begin with. So the bigger the object is, 
the larger absolute error we can tolerate and still stay within our percent errors. In construction, generally, um, we consider, depending on what we're doing, generally an eighth of an inch is considered to be a, an adequate error if you're within eighth of an inch. Some applications you do want to be to within a sixteenth. Others you could be up to a quarter. Now that is framing construction. Um, if you got into cabinetry and furniture making, those tolerances get quite a bit tighter. Um, you could not be a sixteenth of an inch off. You usually you're looking at a sixty-fourth of an inch for cabinets is what you're dealing with. Okay, so now let's say we take a measurement. And we get a result of 4.3 inches. So I want to find from this measurement, now let's do this. Let's make it a little bit easier. We would never get 4.3. Let's do this. We got four, four and one quarter inches is our measurement. And I'm going to tell you the ruler looked like this. So that ruler has a degree of precision of 1 8 inch. So it's telling us the possible error. So my absolute error. Is just equal to the possible error of plus or minus not an eighth of an inch, but sixteenth of an inch. I heard someone say it. Plus or minus a sixteenth of an inch. That is our absolute error. We have to consider the absolute error in that measurement to be the maximum possible error based on the degree of precision of the measuring device. So then the relative error, since we don't know the actual value or desired value, we're going to take our absolute error and put it over the measurement of four and a quarter. So one sixteenth divided by four and a quarter is 0 0.0147. which converts to 1.47%. Depending on what you are building or what you're working on, a 1 or 1.5% error is, in many cases, acceptable. So what if we're using this ruler here And we get a measurement of oh, 72 and a half inches. Our absolute error, again, is considered to be the possible error in the measurement. So to get that possible error again, we have to look at our degree of precision. What's the degree of precision in that ruler? Six. A fourth of an inch. There we go. Quarter of an inch. Good job. So that means our possible error is going to be plus or minus what? You got to divide by two or multiply by one half. So plus or minus one eighth inch. Yeah. There you go. So that's our possible error is plus or minus an eighth inch. How do we find our relative error?
One eighth inch over. The measurement is 72 and a half. Oops, that didn't work. Let me try that again. So point zero zero one seven two, or as a percent, that is point one seven two percent. So that's pretty small. That's less than a quarter of a percent. But now what if I use that same ruler to measure something that it that measures to be two and a quarter inches? Well, my absolute error is still plus or minus an eighth inch. Still the same ruler, and the ruler still only has a degree of precision to a quarter inch. So my relative error is going to change. My relative error is going to be an eighth of an inch over two and one fourth. Which gives me 0 0.0555. If I change that to a percent error, That becomes 5.56%. Being off by over by over 5% is most likely not acceptable. So what that's telling us is this ruler here, tape measure or whatever, that only goes to the nearest quarter of an inch, has a degree of precision of a quarter inch, is adequate for measuring something that's 72 and a half inches long. But it is not adequate for measuring something that's two and a quarter inches long. If I'm measuring something that small, I would most likely want a measuring device that had a little bit higher degree of precision, a smaller possible error built in. Let's now look at, oh, let's say that we have a, Object that measures twenty seven inches and a relative error of point four. Oops, let's be a little more realistic. That'd be forty percent. Point zero zero four. I want to find the absolute error. So here I could use the relative error to find the absolute error, but it'd be a lot easier to use the percent error. My percent error would be found by taking the 0 .004 and making the percent. So moving the decimal over two spots would be 0.4%. So how do I use that to find my absolute error? Well, that percent, 0.4%, is 0.4 out of 100. It is my error over my measurement. So the 27 is the measurement. I will cross, multiply, and divide. 0.4 times 27 um, comes out to be what? 10.8. So that divided by 100 is 0 0.108. So there's an absolute error here of 0 0.108, just under an eighth of an inch of error. Any questions? Okay, so in your notes, 
let's say a plan calls for a piece that is 13 and 5 eighths inches. You measure and cut, and you end up with a piece that is 13 and 3 eighths inches. In your notes, find for me the absolute error, the relative error, and the percent error quick. So the absolute error is found by finding the difference. What's that come out to be? Five eighths minus three eighths would be two eighths or one quarter. One quarter. You're hung up on that one sixth today, aren't you? The relative error is going to use that. It's going to be a quarter inch divided by which one do I use? The three eighths, thirteen and three eighths, or thirteen and five eighths? The five eighths is my desired. So one quarter divided by thirteen and five eighths. Point zero one eight three five. And my percent error, found by moving it over two spots, 1.835%. Anybody get 1.8 or 1.835%? Struggling a bit? Couple of you? Okay, it's not bad. An item that was supposed to be eighteen and three quarters inches has a relative error of Point zero one three 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 is our relative error. Find the absolute error. In other words, how far off is it? In your notes, I'll give you a minute to work on that. So what I would do is I would change that point zero one three 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 into one point three three. 3%. So it's 1.33 over 100. Over here, where's my 18 and 3 quarters going to go? It goes on bottom. That's the whole amount. So we're going to cross multiply and divide. 1.333 times 18 and 3 quarters. gives us 0.25 inches. Or for you guys, it might be 0.24 or something. Um, so that is a quarter inch. So plus or minus a quarter inch is what we're off by. I know it wasn't because I looked at your 0.25 on your calculator right away. Well, yeah, that gave it away as I'm figuring it out in front of you, yes. <laughs> sure. Now we know who's paying attention, right? So this idea of absolute and relative comes into play in another important spot as well. If you guys go into the cabinet making side of it or the furniture making side of it, you're going to deal with blueprints or design drawings at least that might have something labeled like this. Now I'm just going to give you a simple dimension, and it might be labeled as uh, 
1.25 inches plus or minus 0 0.03 inches. So we could be off by as much as three hundredths of an inch is what that's saying. This is implying a lot of information. This is what we call an absolute, not an absolute error now, but an absolute tolerance. And what we actually have here, the plus or minus 0 0.03 is what is called an allowance. We are allowed to be three hundredths of an inch on either side of that desired measurement. That is what we call the desired value. In a perfect world, we would have this measured at exactly one and a quarter or 1.25 inches. But the world isn't perfect. There's going to be a little bit off. This is saying we, st we have to be within three hundredths of an inch. One of the things that is implied by this is a range. It's a range of acceptable values. And that range works just like our range did on our degree of precision and possible error when we were reporting measurements off of a ruler. We take our desired value, the 1.25 inches, we would subtract our allowance of 0 0.03 to get 1.22 inches is the minimum. Often just referred to as the min. To a maximum value of 1.25, our desired value, plus the allowance of 0 0.03, would give us 1.28 inches as our maximum. Often just called the max. So the range of acceptable values here is 1.22 inches to 1.28 inches. The, the word tolerance actually comes from the difference between these. The difference between those 1.28 minus 1.22 is 0 0.06 inches. That is the tolerance in this measurement. So there's 0 0.06 inches of tolerance. You have a 0 0.06 inch or 600 of an inch range that you have to fit that measurement, that item into. Now you'll notice here that the tolerance in this type of an of an allowance is always just going to be double the allowance. So I keep my drawing simple here. So let's say we have 0 0.875 inches plus or minus Oh, let's go 0 0.025 inches. So here we can be off by 25 thousandths of an inch. Find the range of possible values, of acceptable values here. So we're getting tired. How do we find the first one? The desired value, 0.875, add or subtract. Or subtract, right? Subtract our allowance of 0.025. It's going to give us 850 thousandths of an inch. That is our minimum value. Up to our maximum value, give it a desired value of 0.875 plus that allowance of 25,000. So I leave 0.900 inches. So my acceptable range is from 850 thousandths to 900 thousandths.
So that gives me a tolerance of how much? Well, 900 thousandths minus 850 thousandths gives us a difference of 50 thousandths of an inch. That is our tolerance. And again, it could have been found just by doubling our allowance. Take our allowance times 2. But before we call it a day, I want to hit it something else here. This we said was an absolute tolerance. We can have a relative tolerance. And in a relative tolerance, our allowance is given as a percent. So let's convert this one here. We had, as an absolute, 0.875 inches plus or minus 0 0.025 inches. If I wanted to convert that into an absolute tolerance or absolute allowance, or sorry, from, from an absolute tolerance or allowance to a relative tolerance or allowance, I'm going to take my allowance over my desired value and I'm going to find what percent that is. So I will cross multiply and divide 0 0.025 times 100 divided by 0 0.875 it's going to give us 2.86 percent. So what this is saying here is if I wanted to, I could express this as 0.875 inches plus or minus 2.86%. So that would be as a relative tolerance or percent tolerance. We will discuss this more on Friday. We'll actually talk about doing operations with tolerances and something called interference and clearance fits. And that's going to wrap up this unit on, a, or this little section of the unit on errors and precision, which means next week, Wednesday, we will have a quiz. In fact, we might do it Friday. I'll, I'll have it sent out. Um, if we get done early enough on Friday, we might do the quiz together on Friday. For right now, some practice for you guys. We're looking in the big book. On page 224, exercise 7-5, we'll have you work on 1 through 11, the odds. That is adding and subtracting numbers with significant digits. Remember, when you add or subtract, you preserve precision. Which means you're worried about place value. Also, I'll have you look at page 227, exercise 7-8, 1 through 15, the odd. Remember, when you're multiplying or dividing, you preserve accuracy. And accuracy is dealing with the number of significant digits. And just to get you started on the, the tolerances, on page 228, exercise 7-9, I'll have you look at 1 through 11, the odds. So these are all out of the big book.